once again can I welcome you to this journey through Holy Week. It's such a great honour to share this reflection with you and I hope and pray that those who are watching or listening are safe and well. We are following a book called When They Crucified My Lord by Brother Ramon. So Thursday of Holy Week, Maundy Thursday. So let us begin by reading from the Bible. This is from John's Gospel, chapter 13. Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from the world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that he had tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. And Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. We're following on from um, previous meditations. Um, and I'm going to start actually by reading from um, the book itself, um, just for a little bit. So Brother Raymond asks, uh, uh, reads, When I was curate at St Mary's Episcopal Cathedral, Glasgow, one of my tasks for the Maundy Thursday service was to seek out 12 people to participate in the foot washing ceremony. Some were eager, some were honoured and some were reticent. Marion was shy and I would not press anyone, but in her case I said, Marion, you will find it such a wonderful experience if you will just allow yourself to take part. She did, and afterwards she said something like, I felt so humble and insignificant when the bishop took off his chasuble, bound the towel around his waist and knelt at my feet washed and kissed them. But then, so precious. She had discovered the joy of submission, obedience and humility. This is what the story is about. It is an enacted parable of the glory of Jesus, who laid aside his divine glory, stooped to become one of us, girded himself with our humanity and knelt at our feet in lowliness and love. So the disciples arrived in the upper room and the towel and the uh, water in the pots were all at hand. Now, unfortunately, an argument had occurred between the disciples about who was the greatest. And nobody wanted to become the slave by watching their feet. Because once you have proudly made your stand, spoken your opposition, countered your opponent, it is then very difficult to retrace your steps. She can't take back the hasty words and apologise. Not so easy. 
So Jesus, Jesus, in this atmosphere of tension and coldness and pride, bent on their behalf. Now you can imagine the growing discomfort, the unease that was in that room as he removed his outer garment, put the towel around his waist and knelt in silence. Not a word was spoken as he washed the feet of those disciples until he came to Peter. Peter felt as if he was going to explode. He was overcome with the feel of needing to repent. And when he knelt at Peter's, his Peter's feet, he said to him, as he drew his feet away, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? And Jesus looked up into his eyes and said, you do not know what I am doing, but later you will understand. You do not know what I am doing, but later you will understand. It shows us all the complexity of human life, doesn't it? The loss and the pain that we feel when we're humbled. We are in the midst of anguish at the moment, of pain and sorrow, of sickness. It seems to invade our very being. But if we go back to the gospel, with all this going on, Jesus speaks those words then and now. You do not know what I am doing, but later you will understand. A small piece again from Brother Raman's um, book. I remember being moved at my first reading of a hymn based on the 19th century Scottish divine Samuel Rutherford. The sands of time are sinking. One verse reads like this. With mercy and with judgment, my web of time he wove. The A, the Jews of sorrow, were lustered by his love. I'll bless the hand that guided. I'll bless the heart that planned. When throned where glory dwelleth in Emmanuel's land. Peter would understand in the future. Maybe we will understand in the future. I hope and pray so. For now it is time to surrender, to surrender himself to the loving touch and cleansing which only Jesus offers. Unless I wash you, you have no share with me, replied Jesus. And Peter's impetuous affection spilled over and the pendulum swung completely in the other direction. Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. For all Peter's faults, he was a lovable character. He was warm and completely human. And Jesus understood this and he ministered to him in his deepest need. And once Jesus touch that tender spot in Peter's soul, he yielded, laid aside his stubbornness and independence and simply allowed Jesus to take his feet, caressing them, washing them in a gentle but firm way. And Peter began to understand. During this Easter journey, this journey of Holy Week, there's a lot of darkness still ahead. And this was the first of many lessons 
in which Peter would stumble. He'll fall, he'll deny, and he'll run away. But it was a lesson truly learned. And afterwards he looked back and saw this experience as a watershed, yielding its meaning in so many aspects of his future life of ministry. His future in leadership and suffering leading to the ultimate understanding of glory. Let us pray. Jesus girded with a towel, you kneel before me when I should fall at your feet. You embrace me tenderly when loving affection should be my heart's initiative. You ask me to allow you to minister to my deepest needs. I realise in part that so much of my life is lived by faith and that I must believe you where I cannot see and trust you when I cannot prove. Today, Lord, let me surrender to your tender care and then let me gird myself with the towel of service and do for others what you have done for me. Amen. So once again, thank you for joining me along this journey of Holy Week and I hope that we've all learnt the lesson that we can serve if we are we are allowed to um, be served too and this is a great thing to take on board that you cannot love unless you are loved. Yield surrender. Surrender to that loving forgiveness and cleansing that only Christ offers. And then let his spirit humble us and humble our service as a mark of our Christian lives. For nothing is too menial or insignificant for him and therefore for us. At this very difficult time in the history of the world, let us pray that we may, through the love of Christ, serve in his name. Please bow your heads for the blessing. Christ crucified, draw you to himself, to find in him a sure ground for faith, a firm support for hope, and the assurance of sins forgiven and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be with us now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>